right, uh, 26 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday. I mean, Wednesday. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm so confused. From Wednesday. Morning. See, this is why we need self-driving cars, because people get confused. So just let the car drive itself, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, you, hear, <laughs> you hear all the time about uh, new innovations in cars, and uh, I mean, they, they clearly, cars really clearly have changed a lot, even in our lifetimes. Um, and... You, there's a there's a shuttle up in Gainesville, believe it or not, that uh, has no driver. Mm -hmm. You know, they have one up there. It's it, amazing. It carries 12 people back and forth from the Pretty university cool. to the downtown area. And apparently, so far, knock on wood, so good. Nobody's had any injuries. You haven't heard of made any mishaps. I don't know how it works, but it works, right? Yeah. Murray Gunn is the head of global research at Elliott Wave International. He's a contributing author to the book uh, Socionomic Studies of Society and Culture. He served on the board of the Society of Technical Analysts, Analysts at e in the United Kingdom. He's a fund manager in global funds, currencies, and stocks. So he knows a little bit about that whole Bitcoin thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and he's a best-selling author. Today he's on the phone with us of all the things to talk about. What is actually causing the, the the push for faster cars? I mean, you can't really go faster. Maybe that's about to change. Who knows? Yeah. Good, good morning, Murray. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. And where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from London in the UK. All right. How? What's the speed limit? Of, oh, you have to tell me miles per hour. I don't think I'll understand. Ki ki kilo kilometers. Kilometers, yeah. We have uh, 70 miles per hour on the motorway or highway. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the same here. Um, so do you think it'll be faster in, in the future? Well, that certainly seems to be the push at the moment for uh, faster uh, speeds. Uh, it's going on. If you look in the continent, in Germany, obviously, it's a lot faster. It's more like uh, 120 miles an hour over there. What? But, 120? Yeah, 100. Wow. Wow. Is it safe? I believe so. The Germans, they certainly build good cars over there in Germany, so I think they're pretty safe drivers. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, I'm not driving over there. So, but, but is the speed going to increase because safety technology is being implemented into the cars? Well, no. I mean, our take on it is that um, we're seeing this development and need for such high-powered, speedy vehicles at the moment. It's very simply, it's because society, at least in the developed economies, is in a good mood. Uh, now, how, how do you measure the mood of society? Oh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, some people will be grumpy and sad, others will be elated and positive, but uh, what we do at the Socioeconomics uh, Institute, uh, we, it, it enables us to measure the overall mood uh, of a society, and the, the best measurement we've found uh, to measure the overall mood of a society uh, called a sociometer is actually the stock market. So when, when social mood is trending positively, society in general has an air of optimism and this motivates certain social actions. Really? The most direct action being that people want to buy stocks. Um, and when the stock market is going down, or when social mood is going down, people want to sell stocks. And so this, um, these cycles of uh, positive and negative trending uh, mood corresponds to whether we want faster vehicles or slower vehicles. Oh, really? That's interesting. But I, th my question about so socioeconomic moods, I mean, wouldn't they vary different from the United States to Asia to Europe to other parts of the world? Or, or, or are we all in sync with each other? No, you're right. They, they, they definitely do vary. Um, I mean, if you look at what happened in Japan over the last uh, two or three decades, obviously the Western economies were in a period of positive social mood and Japan was going through a period of negative social mood. So uh, each uh, culture, each society will have its own uh, sociometers at, at different phases of the cycle. At the North American Auto Show, they're showcasing a car that can go 277.9 miles per hour. Whoa. Uh, yes, yes, the Koenigsegg Agera. That's a Swedish-built uh, car. So that's the top speed. And, and that's what we've found now is that when the stock market is up, social mood is up, stock market is up, and you get speed records being broken all the time. My own particular... Um, Specialities in motorcycles, and, and that's certainly been a great uh, correlation between social mood and top speed of motorbikes over the last uh, 100 years. 
Uh, but yes, in the show there was the uh, Koenig Sega, uh, Koenig Sega But also in the show, what was interesting for for us was that they were featuring the, the main feature was on the truck or the uh, pickup market, and that in itself is a sign of uh, peak positive social mood. If you think back to where we were in the late 1990s, we had the craze for sports utility vehicles. Uh, which um, I think okay. might have yeah. mm-hmm. in so, the Hummer coming out in 1999, just at the top of the top market. Um, mm-hmm. So you get uh, those sort of uh, iconic trucks are very um, apt for the peak of a social mood. So okay. is it is it more about the fact that we have more money to spend, and therefore the automakers are trying to tempt us with with newer and faster things? It's partly partly that, uh, but really the underlying um, aspect is that uh, the sort of endogenous social mood that people feel better, people feel um, more confident. Uh, they actually demand faster cars, and so the, the the manufacturers are just responding to the demand. People in a bull market, they want to go faster. So, how does Elliott Wave use this information? What how, um, it's obviously the, you've done the research, you got the information. How do you then apply that information? Well, we look at uh, what's happening in, in the society, what the trends uh, are happening, such as this one here, and we look at that in relation to where the the, the stock market is now. Uh, using Elliott Wave analysis, we can uh, anticipate the different cycles in the stock market. Um, and so at the moment, we think the stock market is uh, near a peak. And that corresponds to, to some of the things we're seeing in society, such as this need for, for higher speed. So that's a sort of confirmation for us that the stock market is um, at, a, at a significant high point at the moment. So the sports car is truly making a comeback. I mean, we were talking like last week, um, back in the 1960s, uh, people would write songs about their cars because they were in love with their cars. And now <laughs> there there was this big lull about cars, and now it seems like they're they're making a comeback. Yes, they are, definitely. And it's not just, um, you know, for the super rich, uh, really. Uh, you've got the um, Toyota, they're offering um, a 300-horsepower Camry. Uh, that I can get you from zero to 60 in less than six seconds. And then, then there's the usual mix of things like the Subarus and um, uh, the Dodge Challenger and things like that. So uh, there, it's definitely uh, got a lot of um, uh, emotion at the moment. Uh, and so the car shows must reflect this then, uh, the, the, even the, the antique car shows. Uh, yes, they're certainly popular. And um, and that is another sign that we're we're near a peak. That's interesting. So so this must be a relatively new sort of science because I mean we've only really had cars for about a hundred something years, right? Yeah. So it must be relatively new, right? This whole uh, connection between fast cars and and doing well social and economically. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yes, it's certainly what. Uh, We've noticed since the obviously motor car was invented, but the good thing is we've got we've got data for the stock market, which is the barometer of social mood, which goes back to the late uh, 1800s. So we can we can uh, do a research which looks at both the, the social mood, the stock market, and the design and the speed of uh, not just motor cars but uh, motorcycles as well. And and there is the research that's been done suggests there is a good uh, correlation. What is uh, the, so? Uh, what is the fastest you've ever driven a motorcycle? <laughs> I, said, uh, I took my bike to the track a couple of years ago. Certainly wouldn't do it on the on the roads. And I uh, got my bike up to I think it was 137. Oh, wow! Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Isn't that scary? Do you have a helmet, law in England? <laughs> well, I had, all, I had all the safety equipment, yes. The bike, the bike. <laughs> uh, you did bring up trucks earlier. Are trucks getting to be more sporty looking, and are they going back to the two-seaters where it's not marketed as a family truck anymore? Um, there is a little bit of that trend coming through. If you look at the three models that were uh, 
showcased at the the show this year. Um, the so the Chevy uh, Silverado, the Ram uh, 1500, and the Ford Ranger. They're all uh, slightly different from each other, but the, certainly the, the Silverado and the Ram. Uh, what they have in common is they're they're bigger. They're they're bigger than the previous models, and in the Ram's case, um, it's got more power uh, on it. Uh, it can pull. I think a ton more than the previous model could. So um, it's all about uh, bigger and bolder, uh, really, for the trucks at the moment, which is another sign of, of peak social mood. Wow. Uh, Murray Gunn is our guest. We're needing to wrap it up with, because of the clock. Um, the website I have is elliotwave.com. Is that correct? There's uh, elliotwave.com or socionomics. That's S O C I O nomics. Okay, and and do we do our listeners use that website um, as a way to have research information? Is that why? Uh, yes, there's lots of uh, research information on there, and um, yeah, you can dig into it. Okay, uh, Murray, thank you for getting up and and well, getting up. You're late later than us. Yes, aren't you? it's lunch. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us today, Murray, and uh, and and we'll call back anytime. That was fun. Be, be safe on that motorcycle. That's yeah. what I say. Be safe on that <laughs> motorbike. All right, we'll, we'll be right back. If you find an animal or a bird that needs help, call Animus Foundation at 352-843-6379. They will come and get the animal if you can't take it to them. High school students and those with court-ordered community service can earn required hours in this rewarding environment. And veterans who share a bond with animals and parrots who have been through mental or physical trauma are especially welcomed. Families, clubs, and tourists can arrange for tours of Animus without driving for hours or miles. Consider volunteering. Animus needs you. Hey, this is Matt Wilkerson from Verizon. You work all day, right? So why would you want to spend your night out shopping for that new phone? Well, Marion County, let me and Verizon help you out. I can deliver to your home or office, saving you precious time. Phone, tablets, internet, home phones, even accessories. Whatever you need, we will deliver free of charge. Call me at the store, 352-528-0020. That's 528-0020. With a graduate degree in management and leadership from Webster University, there will never be a better time for you to explore what's next in your career. Classes are scheduled so you can continue your normal workday routine. And the accelerated program means a new term starts about every 10 weeks. If you're looking to gain a broad general management and leadership perspective, then... 